This is a Micro Four Thirds camera, the Panasonic GH4. Like its newest sibling, the GH6, it's hard to break the full frame bias in photography and video. I have a crop full frame and a Micro Four Thirds sensor camera. I can't understand why no one likes these cameras. Look, it's got a flip out screen. Nikon still has this screen in development. I'm gonna go all out and say, you can't stop me. The Panasonic GH4 is the goat of mirrorless cameras. Find out next why I think the Panasonic GH4 is a camera to take seriously. Welcome to my channel. My name is Vaughn. The Panasonic GH4 is the goat of mirrorless cameras because of its accomplishments. The Panasonic GH4 parallels another goat, Mike Iron Man Tyson. Think about it. One day you're knocking out other contenders in the video genre, then you're getting knocked out by Sony and Canon. But you come out with the GH5 to stay competitive and like biting off Evander Holyfield's ear, eventually you bite off the GH5 Venus engine processor and release the GH5 too. But like everything else in life, something happens along the way that makes part of your life a blur. Finally, you become a meme of yourself. Enter the G86. Michael Four Thirds cameras aren't dead. They just keep reappearing when you least expect them. Remember back in 2014 when every camera maker, including Canon and Nikon, was still doing DSLRs? Sony didn't even sniff the mirrorless camera market until around 2016. YouTube started streaming 4K video in 2014. The Panasonic GH4 was ahead of its time. The GH4 was the first hybrid camera that was capable of recording 4K and ultra high definition video. It was capable of outputting 422 10-bit over HDMI. With this camera, you get 4K video with V-Log. That's crazy. 4K in a 1080p world. This camera was blazing trails on YouTube when they were testing the 4K standard. Remember vlogging? This camera was a suggestion from an online vlogger. My other camera, a Nikon D3100, a crop sensor, was only good for photography. It wasn't that great for video. So I had to find another camera and so I chose the GH4. At first, when I bought this camera, I was worried about the size of the sensor. Here's this chart for the Micro Four Thirds. It's in there somewhere. Don't believe people when they say size doesn't matter. Most people can't tell the difference between a full frame or a crop sensor or a Micro Four Thirds sensor. If you wanna leave a comment about this video, Go ahead, I appreciate your comments, and also hit that like button. Being the goat means the camera has to overcome shortcomings, just like any goat. It's like when you're out in the field and another video person asks you why your lens is so small. My answer is always, great things come in small packages. With an adapter or a speed booster, you can use big boy lenses from Canon, Nikon, and even high dollar cinema lenses. Put any one of the GH line cameras in a cage with a microphone, a monitor, and a sound recorder, and you have a video production in a snap. Being the GOAT means that the new generations of cameras, like the G86, they have V-Log available in camera and ProRes 422HQ, which makes the new G86 something to at least think about in Micro Four Thirds camera. One of the shortcomings that I disliked about these Micro Four Thirds camera was the sensitivity to light. In bright light, you'll need a filter, which means that higher ISO settings and a chance for unwanted noise is there. To remedy this problem, the new G86 has dynamic range boost to counter this issue of the past. I will leave you the link in the descriptions below if you want to get more information about this feature. Also, in low light situations, going above 3200 ISO might produce unacceptable noise. With Micro Four Thirds cameras, you need a fast lens in the 2.8 range if you want to shoot in low light. Being an owner of different cameras, I'm always interested in color signs. The GH4 colors are a little undersaturated. The newer GH6 colors are better. 
When you apply LUTs, this is where those subtle differences in colors usually appear. But this is normal with all camera makers. You're probably wondering about how good is it with photography. Let's say I'm lucky I have other camera bodies. Photos coming out of this camera are soft due to the need for fast lenses and its sensitivity to light. This is a video centric camera, meaning if you wanna shoot good quality videos, you have to adapt to changing settings and figuring out lens conversion, which this one has a two times crop. Okay, let's pile on one more thing. The autofocus is slow and unreliable. I have to use manual focus and the remote app to keep the shots in focus. If you're doing a YouTube video with this, this was challenging. Also, if you move the camera too fast, you will get that rolling shutter issue. I know I said one thing, but I'm trying to keep Micro Four Thirds cameras relevant. I know all of these issues make the Panasonic GH4 sound like it's not the GOAT, but it is for the achievements that it has brought to the table. Other camera manufacturers were able to use the features of this camera as a template. Just like Mike Tyson, if you stick around long enough, someone might keep you relevant. My friend, I, I love you. Feel, feel, feel allows me to reach my highest potential. The fear of failing. Is an illusion. Yeah. Fear is an illusion. But we have to have desire. We have to have something that pushes us. Fear pushes us. Come on. Micro Four Thirds is a camera format for those that want to be in a niche. You know those types. The types that like micro brewed beer. Or they like coffee makers like a niche zero coffee grinder. That's too rich for my blood. Cool thing about being in a niche is if you get bored, you can always find a new niche. Like full frame hybrid cameras. Please subscribe, watch my other videos, and thank you for watching.